there was a time when index and equity option traders were regarded as high octane, win or lose a fortune types, or nerdy rocket scientists. Brokers dug options risky and said stay away. Now, however, more and more investors are using options for their original purpose, to hedge risk and to enhance returns in a measured manner. So if you are wondering how, how can options work for you as an investor, let me explain to you in this video. So first, what exactly is an option? As the name option suggests, it is a contract that offers buyers the right to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price, known as the strike price. The buyer is the party who can choose to exercise this right anytime before or on the expiration date of the option. The seller, on the other hand, has the obligation to fulfill the contract if the buyer chooses to exercise the right. But of course, to be given the right to do that, the buyer has to pay a premium to the seller to compensate the seller for taking up the obligation. So for example, the buyer of the call option has the right to exercise a call to buy 100 shares of Apple stock at $150 per share anytime on or before the expiration date of 15 October 2021, regardless of the current market price of Apple. In exchange for this right to exercise the call option, he has to pay a premium of $450. As you can see from the definition, there are two types of options. One is a call option which gives buyers the right to buy an underlying asset. And the second is a put option which gives buyers the right to sell an underlying asset. In the transaction for an option, you can either be a buyer or a seller of the option. So in this beginner's guide, let's focus on understanding call options from the perspective of a buyer. Alright, I know the original definition of options may still sound a handful to some of you. So let me explain how a call option works using an analogy instead. Suppose Jerry is thinking of migrating to Japan and he has found a dream house. The existing owner of the house, Tom, is willing to sell the house to Jerry at a price of $1 million. Well, Jerry thinks this is a rather good deal but he's still hesitant and would like to take some more time to consider. But on the other hand, he's afraid that the house will be sold to another buyer in the meantime. So he thought of a brilliant plan. He told Tom, how about I pay you a fee of $10,000 and in exchange, you are not allowed to sell the house for a period of two months from now. Within this two month period, if I come to you to purchase the house, you have to sell it to me at $1 million. Tom thinks that this is a win-win deal for him, so he said, deal. In this analogy, Jerry is a buyer of the call option. He paid a premium of $10,000 for the call option in order to receive the right to buy his dream house at a predetermined price of $1 million with a grace period of two months. Then, on the other hand, we have Tom, who is the seller of the call option. He has the obligation to sell Jerry the house if Jerry approaches him to buy the house anytime within the two-month period. So let's explore what could have happened two months later and how that is going to impact Jerry, the buyer. Under scenario one, oh dear, there has been plans to build factories near the dream house. As a result, the market price of a house in that area dropped $800,000. However, if Jerry still wants to purchase his dream house from Tom, he must pay $1 million. So in this scenario, it doesn't make sense for Jerry to buy the house from Tom at $1 million anymore as he will be better off buying the house in that area of the market, even after taking into account the $10,000 sunk cost. The total maximum loss he incurred if he does not exercise the option will be the premium paid of $10,000. Scenario 2, hooray, the railway network is underway. As a result, the market price of the house in this location has increased to $1.2 million. Jerry got a good deal by exercising the option and buying a property worth $1.2 million using an outlay of just $1.01 million. So does this seem clearer to you now? 
How core options work in the financial markets is similar to how it works in the dream house analogy, except that there are even more considerations to it. In this dream house analogy, the value of the option stays constant at $10,000. However, things are not that straightforward for the core options in the financial markets. So in the next video, we'll be sharing with you why the value of core options change and how it can affect the buyer of the core options. If you want to stay in the loop and be notified when the next video is released, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. So see you in the next video.